welcome and thank you for joining us again here at the Predator World 8-Ball Championship here in the Convention Center in San Juan, Puerto Rico. In this match we will have Mickey Kraus from Denmark versus Omar Al Shaheen from United Arab Emirates. Your commentators for this match will be Tony Robles and myself, Tim de Ruiter. How are you today, Tony? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, we're both having fun today playing in the tournament. It's day one. Uh, as you know, we were all cheering for you. Everyone <laughs> in the, on the Predator team was cheering for you today against Chan Young Lin. You, you, you played well, you came back, came short by one game. I, uh, we were hoping to see a Hill Hill thriller there. Yeah, it would have been nice, but uh, I just fought as hard as I can. And that's all that's we can do, goes, right? So, very interested to do some eight ball commentary with you, as yeah. <laughs> you are a very knowledgeable guy about the patterns. So, let's see what he can do. The break is ob obviously a very big part. Oh, oh making the two. <laughs> well, the ball's first impression are looking pretty good. Nice mm -hmm. spread of the balls. You know, I told uh, Mark earlier when we were doing commentary that one thing I've noticed from all the matches I watched throughout the years, most of them is when you're playing eight ball and you're not hitting it dead perfect to stop in the center, almost always that cue ball. And even when you do, almost always that cue ball ends up in the top rail because you have five <laughs> added balls in the bottom of the rack that's creating more of a pushback for the cue ball coming over. So you, the only way you can adjust for that is by hitting the cue ball slightly higher than what you're accustomed to in the ten, on the 10 ball break. And it well, happened almost the entire match. The cue ball wound up top rail almost the entire match when we, when we were talking well, about Well, there's, there's a big stream. I mean, just a big stream of balls floating upwards. Yeah. It's never going downwards. Mm -hmm. Only two balls maybe, so. So over here, Tim, I like, I like shooting the 15 and the 11. If he can get on the 11, he didn't get the 11 because I was going to suggest, yeah, if he can make the 11. Yeah, I would really like to take <coughs> the 11 out just because then all the other work is on the other half of the table. You can just stay close to the balls. and yeah, You have three stop shots, the 10, the 13, the 9, and the 8 ball. He has to try to get straight on that 10 ball. I think he did. Beautiful. Looks like a good start for Nicky Kraus. Obviously a <laughs> good talent from Denmark. Just hasn't really had the chance yet to show what he's really capable of. Yeah, he's a hell of a player. Good kid, too. I call him AMC every time I see him. Hey, yo, AMC, how you doing? <laughs> because he saw me that I was uh, looking at my phone one time in a tournament uh, earlier this year. He saw that I was investing in, uh, that I was invested in AMC stock. So you know what he did? He says, I saw you invested. I went and I, I just put up a thousand on AMC stock. <laughs> I said, wow. I said, yeah, so the so stock is actually doing pretty bad now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good disclaimer. <laughs> so, guys, if you listen to this, <laughs> don't buy AMC. <laughs> <laughs> well, now is the time to buy because it's, it's a dip. because of how low it is. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, we bought it about this 29, 29, and now it's cur it went down as low as five, like a couple of days ago. We take no responsibility for the words Tony is saying right now. <laughs> Just saying, no financial advice. He's disclaimer, not a disclaimer. I am not a. I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> Okay, so good break and run from Mickey. And uh, I was also talking to Mark about how important the break is in eight ball compared to the other games. Like in the other games, sometimes you break bad and you still hook the next shot and you you get you got play. That's correct. In eight ball, if you break and you don't make a ball, most of the time the other guy is going to be out. Absolutely. Like just, I mean, I've just seen it so many times. Even when it gets scrappy, yeah, well, you know, we're absolutely. playing professional level here. It's because in eight ball you can shoot any you can literally shoot any ball. Oh, and they they didn't even know it was win or break. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, you're right. I think when you say they, I think you you meant both. Both. Yeah. yeah, both. Because yeah. Mickey sat in his chair yeah. and Omo was ready to break. <coughs> I'm pretty sure Mickey likes that. Oh, a nice break again. Makes a two ball again and. Oh, again, first impression the, 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 the looking two pretty ball, good. The two ball likes him tonight. <laughs> it will always be in his corner. And you see, I do like the stripes, but mi starting off with stripes could be a little, a little more tough. So he's going for solids. And one thing I'm very interested to see in is because I felt that 
actually 60 seconds after the break could be not even enough it's not for me i was talking to mark about that earlier it's not not for the game of eight ball it's it, it sometimes you really have to think out the pattern and having the shot clock really does not help yeah but then now earlier we've seen jason shaw and lucatos and they they were shooting after 20 seconds after the break right they weren't but even it's, doing it's it. different it's different if you're breaking well and the balls are spreading well you see but if you have one of those racks where the balls are clustered up but you you still have a possible pattern or you try to figure out if you should make two in place safe that takes a little, little yeah longer. yeah so that's that's the same thing here like mickey it doesn't really look like he mm -hmm. thinks too much he just mm -hmm. he's like oh i got the solid here and all the others are open mm -hmm. let's go and i'm like yeah. trying to make a plan and trying to use the full 60 seconds trying to right do something you know it's it's different so i like the six four seven and five to the eight because i always choose a ball that's slightly above the eight that way worst case scenario if i end up with a stop shot there somehow i'm at least above the eight and i can cut the ball yeah it just has to make sure he gets a nice i was gonna say nice angle on the seven and well he might be able to still play forward yeah but i definitely would have liked to be way more over mm-hmm just needs to guard himself against the 12 ball. Yeah, can maybe go oh, in between oh, the 12 yeah. and the 9 or play with inside. Ooh, he got, he, that's like I said, he has to guard himself again. I think well, he can see it. Yeah, no, I don't think. No? I, well, he might be able to play real first, but the thing is, I think he was trying to go around the 12 and he overcut the ball. Yeah. Right. So, or, yeah, it looks like real first. Mm -mm. Oh, and I do mm -mm. not like at all the speed he hit yeah. that. Why did he not float the ball in and shoot the eight in the side? Yeah. In case it, it, it goes made, so far. It would have made a better angle, bigger angle for the five ball. I mean, and, he's and gonna the, and the yeah, but the speed too, pocket yeah. speed. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not a not a good shot at all. And actually, it's nice for Omar to get in the match like this with an open opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, like if if he would get to the table with a lot of clusters, he would never get in that rhythm. Now he gets open shots and like how well he plays rotation. Yeah. I would not even su be surprised if this is just easy run out for him. It is. He's going to shoot the 9, 13, 14, 15, and 8. Very nice pattern there for Omar. Yeah, not really much work with the cue ball in general, mm -hmm. just stayed with nice angles and he makes the game look easy sometimes. Oh yeah, I mean, remember when he finished runner up in the World Nine Ball Champion? Yep. He almost won it. Yeah, he's definitely capable. <coughs> just still waiting for his big win like he's had great results. He, I know he's a great bank player too. Always at the Derby City Classic. Had top finishes. Like we battled in the, I think, last 15, last 10 players at Derby 9 ball. Mm -hmm. Like we, we we played and he definitely had a lot of top finishes. Just never really won like that, that big breakthrough right. thing, you know? Like I think he could be even better if he wins one big one. Yeah, when you win a big one, it really, it really, uh, gives you the confidence to know that yes I belong here and that's when you start believing in yourself more not that he doesn't believe in himself now but when you get into certain situations you can handle them better once you you have a win under your belt So breaking a little bit more from the outside compared to Mickey. I would break from where Mickey's breaking from. <laughs> yeah, me too. I would copy yeah. that. Oh, look at this for look results. The yeah. balls. Look at that. The eight went in. The eight on the break. Yeah. That's a win, right? I don't think no, so. I think no, they no, have no, the they option <laughs> to either run 
you either run or you respot the eight. Or, 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 or yeah, you you can either run or respot the eight. Or, or wait, wait, wait. Don't does does he get because I'm on the BCA, he can break again if he wants to, but not here. This is WPA. No, you either choose to yeah. run from here, or have a rebreak. I right. think you have That's a rebreak. Correct. Yeah. That's correct. No, I was actually just messing with you. Yeah, I just don't know if he knows. <laughs> I don't know if he knows that though. He just no, he might be playing a lot of BCA yeah. roles. You never know, but I think it's okay. Oh, now the other side. I think he made two balls. Let me count. Hey, he made two balls on the break, and if he makes a seven and gets out of that that corner, everything is open. Called the seven ball. He might be banking the seven just to make sure he stays out of that corner. Like I said, a great banks player, so I'm not surprised if he would make yeah. this. And I also like the way how he played the two ball in such an open area where he always had the two, the three, or the five ball. Yeah, that's what Steve Miserak used to call leaving the cue ball in the alternate zone where you have alternate shots. Steve Miserak was one of the greatest I've ever seen doing that, especially playing eight ball and straight ball. Yeah, so now probably just picking up the three and then going to the five in the side. Probably pushing the four ball over a little bit more to mm -hmm. side pocket. Oh, and won't even need to, won't even need to. I am not really sure. Oh, okay, yeah. he's still okay. I thought he might yeah. have ran a little bit too far. Yeah, now the four can go on the opposite side if he wants to. Yeah, I do like that. There's plenty of room around the one ball to move towards the eight. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm wondering if he's, he'd rather shoot the four to the eight since it's closer. But, I mean, it's minimum cue ball movement to shoot the four next. But I guess that's what he want to do. That's what he wants to do. I don't know. Yeah, it's looking pretty good here. Yeah. And I would like to, well, he's looking for that perfect angle to draw straight over to the eight. But the only thing with this is if you leave too much angle, you might have to run towards the nine. Uh, it looks like he got pretty strong. I was thinking about just leaving the angle going forward and use one rail to come down. Gotcha. Just to make sure I stay away from the balls. And mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I was... Oh, he's not going to like this. Oh, and this is also the thing. The closer like, you get, the tougher it becomes. This is a tough shot. Take your time. <laughs> Got to make sure you It's make almost it. as if he's trying to return the favor to Mickey for the, for, for the, yeah. for the previous wreck, right? I mean, you, you have to shoot. You always got to cut it, but... Might want to take his extension. We're playing with a 30 second extension, 60 seconds after the break, and one. Uh, what did I, I say? 30 seconds extension. 30 seconds shot clock mm -hmm. with one extension per player and 60 seconds after the break. So he's going for the cut. He's playing low in the cue ball, though. Yep, he's trying to avoid the scratch. He played it very soft. That speed looks speed great. <laughs> oh, wow, it just barely went in. Omar Al Shaheen, what a beauty. He shot that with what I call torture your opponent speed. <laughs> 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 Make him think it's not going to go in by torturing him for a couple of seconds. To be honest, I, w I was not sure about the draw because the draw usually makes a shot a lot more tough. Yeah. But he played it very well. Beautiful view from the arena. The arena lights. Referee making sure the balls are all in place. and Yeah, Jeannie is awesome, and she does a tremendous job. All the referees here are awesome. Yeah, and also, we just had a great match on the other table, having Jason Shaw and Dimitrios Lukatos. They went all the way to Hill Hill. <coughs> it was a nil-biting match. That's awesome. And, and there were so many ar so many people around it. Like, I experienced, like, the same thing. There were so many people around it. Just, it just looks cool, you know? It's just... Oh, no, he's, a wonderful he's always, break. He's always had a monster break. 
10 ball, 9 ball, you name it, he just breaks the balls awesome. Just look at the squad of the cue ball. He really, mm -hmm. like, his body language is telling me he's going all in on the break. Yeah. Compared to a lot of players, like, their body language even shows that they're not yeah. just crushing whatever they, do whatever they can do. Yeah, when I watched your match, you were definitely going to play. <laughs> <laughs> no I was all in. Oh, yeah. all out. I mean, at one point, you even jumped the cue ball off the table. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like, wow, it was he's going all out for sure. No, the thing is, it, having a dry break is almost the same as scratching the cue ball. Yeah, it's no, it is. It's, it it's going to be the you, same end result. If you really give yourself your chance, go all out. Yeah, I agree. I did the same thing in my match just now. I broke as hard as I possibly could. Yeah, that's the thing with eight ball. There's a different, different strategy to it which a lot of people don't know because most of them just play only rotation. Mm -hmm. uh, just a regular rotation break is not so successful in eight ball. I, w I did like the four running into the 14, just soft and leaving the six. Yeah. I think it's quite the challenge to get on the six ball. Well, I don't know if he's going to take care of it now or shoot the four and then take care of it. I don't know how he feels about shooting it now because you can always leave it for last and shoot the eight in the side. I do also like the fact that he's going forward on the seven. If he goes yeah, from well the he seven to, to the, the two, two and then the three in the side. And then the four to the six and the eight ball on the side. Yeah. But has to make sure he now when he gets back to the four, he has to make sure he gets straight, mm -hmm. no weird angles, because yep. then he could have shot it. He, he could have done it earlier if he's going to leave him that same angle now. And he needs to make sure he ends up with an angle on the three two. He got a little too much angle there, Tim. Might have to go f to the top rail and back down. Yeah, and the, the scratch, believe it or not, on this is pretty close. Because if he plays this with a little right spin to where if he hits a short rail to come back down the rail, it's going to push a little bit more through the four. He went the other oh, direction. And wow. Is he going to find the guy between the 6 and the 12? Yeah, I uh, guess. The 8 and the 12, sorry. Yeah, I guess he wants to play the 8 ball in the same side pocket as the 4. So yeah, that way he could I just roll it. Oh, this from here it actually yeah. doesn't look that great. But he's looking very confident on this. Yeah, I don't think he would have played it if he didn't feel comfortable. I'm just surprised that he didn't just shoot a stop shot in the 6 and play yeah. the, you know, minimize the movement of the cue ball. But every, it's a preference. Yeah, and I was but gonna see, I, look at that. I didn't think that ball went, to be honest. Yeah. Like it did look very maybe, sharp. Maybe maybe that's why he missed it because maybe it didn't go. Yeah. I mean it's not guaranteed, but no, he, you caught, might be, he caught that pretty you, thick. You might too, be right. So. You might be right, Tim. I, th I think you're right. I think that, that he couldn't see enough to cut it in. Yeah, so he's really returning the favor here to Mickey. Great opportunity to level the score. <coughs> I do like to shoot the 11 now. Still the 14-12 is kind of tricky. Maybe. Yeah, but he can use the, the 13 ball to get there. He could also choose to, to run into him softly here. I wouldn't mind going underneath yeah. and hit bump the 12. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a, a, I'm, I'm a take no risk type of position player when it comes to straight pull and eight ball. I'm not saying that he shouldn't do it, but it's just you're not oh, not always guaranteed a shot. Well, See, I would I would have liked a little bit he's more speed to be he's honest. So. But he's relying on luck. Is, is what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that that he doesn't know how to maneuver the balls. It's that when you're running into it like that, you have to hit it absolutely perfect. Oh, played a good recovery shot there. Hey, I only liked it with a little bit more speed to. Mm -hmm. At least create enough separation that you right. have both balls. So he played it very soft, which was tricky. 
Now needs a good shot to get on the 13. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to run into the 8 or try to go between them. He's oh. trying to slow down, slow down oh, on him. Oh, well. Uh, he might be okay here. I think he might be able to still cut it and get <laughs> to the right side of the 8, but will probably be a little longer. Let's see if we can take a look at uh, this one. You know who's the best I've ever seen ever in this game? Hitting this with pure draw and killing it? Efren Reyes. Like that. But, I mean, Efren would hit it where the Cuba wouldn't go that far. It's, it's, it's like un uncanny. Well, he could have played a hair of left and really made it come short of the rail, but he's not too scared to shoot. In nah, general. and he's straight, too. Yeah, so... Two each. He shot that and it looked like I am Mickey. I'm supposed to make that. Well, I mean, he's, he's he is. Yeah. <laughs> That's the scary part. He is supposed <laughs> to make it. Here we have the 12. That was a sweet shot. Just when Tony said, oh, no, he's relying on luck, he made that beautiful shot. <laughs> yeah, no, listen, if that were me, the referee told him, told him something. I don't know what she's saying. But if that were me, I would have played... I would have played a safe on, on, on the 14. And here we have the venue. Just have just try to imagine having so many people in the same building and they're not all players. They're yeah. just spectators. They're <laughs> just people that... Look at the peep crowd right around the Joshua yeah, Phillips playing on table number one. With yeah, Martin. just table one has 100 people. Now in the back, there's even more. There's... Yeah. I mean, there might be maybe six, seven, eight hundred people in this building. <coughs> That's what really got me, especially playing in the arena. Like, the arena looks amazing, and I know the cameras are there. But then now there were so many people around me, and everybody was clapping, right. cheering, screaming, making noise. I was like, whoa, what, what's going on? It really got yes, to me. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, I hear you. I loved it, though. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I loved it. But oh. Not another awesome break. But you see how the cue ball keeps coming back? Yeah. Um. And the problem is when the cue ball comes back there a lot, a lot of times it's, it's hard to get uh, a shot on both groups. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's a problem. And it happened to you a couple I of times. I experienced it. I only had, had the, the same solid. combination twice on the top rail. Yeah. You made it the first time and you missed it the second time. You overcut it. Thanks for remembering. You're just like Mark. <laughs> no, I need to remind you what to practice when you go home. <laughs> no, Mark you actually you stated the same thing. <laughs> that's the funny thing. Like he told me, he said, yeah, yeah, and then you miss a combination. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, well, I'm interested to see what he's playing here. As I think he's going to shoot the one to the two. But then it's tough to get on the four. That's the only thing. I'm Like, it's not going to be easy to get back on the four. Well, it all depends on how he gets on the two. If he has a nice angle on the two, if he doesn't overhit it, did he overhit it? Well, no, he might, he might have to play right now <coughs> to the four ball. Because if the three goes in the side, he's good. He could shoot the C or the the three. I think it goes in the side. So he could shoot the seven, the three in the side, the five, and the four in the upper corner pocket. I'm always thinking minimal cubo movement first, no matter what. That's why that's why I'm saying this. See, if he shoots a three, then he could shoot the five and the four, sneak it up past the twelve, stop the cue ball there for the eight ball in the corner. I'm always going to go with the with the pattern that minimizes the movement first before I explore anything else. Yeah, and I play That's a little. That's just my I style of yeah, play. Yeah, I play a little bit more natural angles. Like I'm trying to play a couple balls and trying to float yeah. the ball mm -hmm. in a lot of times. It's I know you're a floater for sure. Um, just wondering, I, I'd like to go from the three to the four, and then shoot the five well, and go to the no other choice. side of the eight. I think that was my original best plan, but. Well, I don't think the five goes past the fifteen. He could always bump it to the nine, too, if he wants. No, that's what I'm saying. He just needs to stun over, like, three balls. Mm -hmm. well, he will play the kiss now. Oh. He is not going to be happy. But this is what I mean, right? If you would have taken the pattern that I said, you wouldn't have this problem. Well, knowing is one and executing is two. Yeah. That's always the thing. I mean, this was definitely not too tough to no. hit the nine. So, no, he just hit it too low. And but he now, didn't hit the rail there. and now he's really trying to push the five ball in front of the corner or make it. But little, yeah, ooh, 
Don't do that, buddy. Don't. You see that a lot in eight ball because eight ball is a frustrating game because if you don't get out, your opponent can shoot literally any one of the seven balls. Yeah. There's no hiding when you get to the last ball. It's actually funny. I said this uh, match before too, but um, someone taught me when I started to play in the beginning. No, the first game I obviously played was eight ball. The guy said, listen, it's always better to miss the first shot than the ball before the eight or the last shot. It's true. Because 100%. then you make your opponent work for it, always. I never forget it. That's why I missed the first shot so many times, Tony. <laughs> no, that, that I, I now I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a way of thinking. So he got a little awkward on the twelve. Well, so one, one thing I learned about a ball, Tim, is, and I said this Ooh. to Mark White earlier. I mean Jim White, is if you're thinking of you in the battle, and you have seven soldiers with you, solids or stripes, and instead of your enemies killing them, you're killing them in friendly fire. Every soldier you kill off is one less ball that you have to defend yourself with. If you're doing it on the table, it's not possible to run out. Yeah. So now, we, once you killed off all your soldiers, what happens at the end of the game? You have no way to defend yourself. Yeah, so I don't really like how he was running out here. I understand that he didn't get perfect on the 12. Yeah. But I really would have liked to get that 12 ball out earlier. Because yeah. you see, this movement was unnecessary. If, I, if he'd done that earlier... He would have had an easy shot going to the yeah. eight. It's funny you mention that because I use a technique that I discovered. You know, I, I've done experimenting all my life. If you have a ball here in the head string in the center where the eight ball is, is I always say it's higher to go from a ball that's higher to a ball the next high, third, fourth, yeah. instead of one down and then up and then down again. And that's yeah. what he did right there. Yeah, he did really go back and forth between mm -hmm. the long rails, which... I mean, eventually you'll come up too short or too long, and then it gets awkward. But he made it work you know, nonetheless, and he's winning here. So, I mean, it's tough to argue with a guy that's running out anyways. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's always a thing. But it's definitely how people, like, th they have different looks at the game, and that's really interesting. Here we see in the bottom, we see the juniors. There's the World Nine Ball Junior Championships under 17 under 19 boys and the girls Dutch Jolien Schuurman playing against Canadian girl I have never seen mm. I saw a girl earlier that was uh, just a hair taller than my five-year-old boy <laughs> playing and this is just so cute watching him play such a young age it's so, awesome so it means it's time yeah he has to start playing now mm -hmm. Yeah, once we finish construction of the house, yes. Oh, and Did he, he do that intentionally? Did he hit the second ball? We'll, we'll he, find out. Because I was practicing that break yesterday. That's one of my favorite breaks. No, he pl he definitely broke second ball purposely. Yep. And he, but That's he broke him perfect, too. If you look at the cue ball, yeah. he went twice in the stack, but hit the center of the stack. That's how you do that break. You want to like hit it with low and no spin so that it'll draw in a straight line. But you want to hit the second ball as full as possible without hit it, hitting the head ball. And if you yeah. do hit it like that, it's always going to go in a straight line across with no spin and come straight back to the rack. And look at that little cluster there with the... Uh, it's just stripes. With the <laughs> stripes, yeah. I guess also something that I've seen a lot of times, um, especially breaking second ball break. Mm -hmm. This happens quite often. To oh, yeah. I mean, you would say it's lucky, but in some kind of way, they find each other. Like yeah. they have... A magnet? No, <laughs> it's just there's, this, there's something there, going on. There's this guy that has a, a YouTube video. See, that's what he's going to do. He's going to shoot the seven in the side. Five, three, five, seven in the side, and then the eight. And like he that. showed how, how he discovered how Corey, ra Corey Duell racked the balls. Do you see that video? I, I exactly well, he always has know. The, the, yeah. he, he, he ends up racking it in a way. Corey's such a genius when it comes to that. He, he racks the balls in a way where all the solids end up together and all the stripes end up clustered up and the eight ball is open it's just the craziest thing yeah i've done it many many times i looked at the video and went i was very impressed but that's only if you're allowed to rack him yourself oh i think so he came short there well the thing is he didn't really play your plan going two wheels forward and have the yeah. seven in the side and this is exactly what you've been saying the up and down between I the know. long rails is I just know. too just risky making it harder it's good. It catches up to you sooner or later. He might make the eight ball now, but it, he might not. He might not get out when he really needs to in the future. Yeah, 
I mean, he still might play a perfect match here, but just mm -hmm. in other matches, he might fail to do yeah. so just because of it. But, I mean, still, he's 4-2, another break and run, and looks like Kraus is gaining some momentum. Hey, you, know, on the you know, in the bar tables, if you try that second ball break and you hit it just right, the corner ball goes in, in the, on the bar table, on the seven-foot table, it goes, like, straight in. Yeah, it's a little bit more tough to do it on mm -hmm. the nine foot, but it's also possible to do it on the nine foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the TV arena, you can see Joshua Feller is playing Mateusz Snigocki from Poland. And in the back, we have the CSI Caribbean Expo. We have a Jam Up Apparel booth, Omega, Isla Adventura or something. Who's that? Isla, Isla, Isla del Canto. Ad no, no, no. There, there's like a ad ad adventure, adventura thing in the back. Oh, Did you adventure. Not see it? So adventura is adventure. Yeah, yeah. Adventure, so yeah. it's La Aventura or something. There's mm -hmm. promotional too, like for tours and stuff. It's really cool. So hit this see, one there, too there thin. He, though. Yeah, there he hit it too thin. He either hit it too thin or he didn't put enough draw. Well, to be honest, he cannot be disappointed because he just didn't hit. I think he hit it too thin. I think that's what you Yeah, say. just look at how low the yeah. cue ball went, and then he just nudged the seven. That was not good. But again, there goes that little cluster there. And I kind of like that. See, uh, the only time I use that break is if I'm struggling with the head on break. If I'm hit head on break, I say, you know what, let me do it this way, that way. I might at least get another turn at the table if I fail to make a ball on the break. Yeah, you need a backup. And I do like that he went for the stripes here, though, because if he, <coughs> he still has to take the 14 away because he has stripes, and it will open up some more room for the 8. Is he going to go for the 9 here? I don't think he needs to take the 11 now. The 11 goes if he, he gets on it. I like that I like that shot better. I think he should follow it. Yeah, needs to, he needs to also get on the 14, so it's time now. <coughs> it's still a tough layout, though. Needs to get to the center of the table to have a shot at the 11. I think that's where I would play. You always have the 12 as a backup. Mm -hmm. You see, like now he's postponing the fact that he has to get on the 11 by taking all his other options away. Yeah, which that, I that's what I'm saying. Like when he shot the 14, he should have played the 11 afterwards. Then the 11, if, if he ends up with too much angle, well, so, so what if I bring the cube on this side? I have backup balls. I have insurance You have balls. the 12. Like now he's got the 9 and the 12. He's going to take the 12 away. Now next time he shoots the 11 and uh -oh. he runs uh -oh. into... Yeah, I don't think that's good. You see, and now he's, I he think he might, might be hooked in all the balls. That's just, yeah, that's also a little straight ball. Like, that's to where your straight ball yeah. knowledge comes from, too, is they don't really, like, a lot of rotation players, they don't run into balls with having backups. Yeah. Like, making sure, oh, I always get to shoot something. I, I see, I, I mean, I can break a, a rack of eight ball, and I'll see him right away. Yeah. But that's because, like you said, I've been doing that all my life. I, did, I haven't just played rotation games. I've been playing straight ball and eight ball as well. You know, a lot of players didn't know until they got into this island that the traditional game in Puerto Rico is eight ball last pocket. And you oh. missed it. Yeah, he tried to it's bank it. And not if that goes in the side. that goes in, ooh. Okay, well, this makes stuff a little bit more difficult yeah. for Mickey with that four ball where it is. If that 15 went in, it's it was wide open mm -hmm. again. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he can shoot the six off the 15. I the 15 think is so. blocking I think the center of the pocket. Yeah, I Maybe think he's it's calling the one? Hit yeah. it with draw so you put a little foul on the one ball? I would not mind it, to be honest. Right? That's a really good shot. Yeah. Open it up. If he gets straight on the seven, he can make the four on the side. Now, needs to make sure. I'm not sure. Can he get on that little piece of long rail just next to the side for the five? I would have just stopped the ball there. Yeah, and then I shoot the two ball and roll yeah, up on that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Now you have a natural angle. Now you don't have to do any any perfect position shot. So he might shoot the seven and go from the long rail and just bump the four ball mm -hmm. really soft if that guarantees him to be on the five. Yeah. If it doesn't, I'm not my I, I'm not doing no, it's it. A good, it's a good shot as long as he doesn't have to shoot too far off the uh, above the eleven, like over the eleven. Yeah, yeah, but only if he would get on the five. Yeah. and I think it, it was not there. So now he's get, it's getting more difficult. He, he, he might have to run yeah, he's into it right now. starting to run out of options here. 
Low right. And the 11 being there, it doesn't help the 5 and the 6 to go in the lower right-hand corner pocket either. Oh, and it's a kill to run, and it's too short. So now the question is, if we can get an, another view from here, probably from where he's shooting from, trying to see if he can come off the rail and hit that ball so solid that it'll stop the cue ball there if he hits it super soft. I think he might be able to or run into it straight. Oh, yeah, but if you, and that's if you, not good. Yeah. See, now he should shoot a stop shot on the five ball, hitting the rail first. See if he can hide him behind the six, hide both balls behind the six. That's the only option I see here. And since this is a nine ball shot. Yeah, but they are very aggressive. Yeah. They're a rotation player. So he's mm -hmm. just, oh, he's going either he's rail going first. For the five, yeah. He's going to have to bank the six if he misses a six and pockets a five ball, one rail. He might be able to bring the six ball with the cue ball. Doesn't have to force it, but just a little bit more mm -hmm. fluent speed. Might be able to just catch the six. Just enough to, to, to make it in the side. Yeah. Oh, he, there's oh, that he draw really again. He really stunned it again. But that's that, a oh, draw, right? Yeah, that stunned draw, that, that's, well, that's no bueno. <laughs> that's what mm -hmm. I was going to say. That's just, it's not going to work. And this is a really big game, to be honest, because 5-2, yeah, it's just a lot bigger than 4-2. Yeah. No. <laughs> No, it's just, no, like, it's you, you want to put your three. opponent, like, especially with the mistake Omar made. Oh. Kim, he's good there. He's good. Still a little long. Has a long cue, though, so he can reach it. Just, <laughs> yeah, it's especially because Omar had the opportunity to make 4-3. Now, if you punish him and run that game out, he's 5-2 and feeling like he's playing horrible. You know, and then... Like, there's definitely so much momentum going on on your side. So, he actually, he let Omar off the hook a little bit there. He did. Yeah, he did. That's what I was trying to say with this course. I'm just trying to figure out why did he go to the second ball break, even though he had a successful one, when he was actually breaking very well from the center. What do you think the thought process there was? I only really go to my – me, personally, I only go to my second ball break. If oh, I'm maybe he's expecting to make yeah. a lot of more balls, but I would be happy with just one. Well, I don't know if, if maybe he's thinking that he um, – maybe he, he knows that they bunch up in the same side you break him from when you hit the second second ball, try to make the game a little more strategic. See, when I won the National Grandmasters Championships in uh, Vegas at BCA the, 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 in 2011, I could not believe I was playing professional players and most of them didn't know how to play safety. But that yeah. was because we playing, we're playing on a seven-foot table. So when you're playing on a seven-foot table, you can defend yourself better because the balls clutter up more because of the limited space on a seven-foot table. Not so on a nine-foot table. Oh, so that's why you haven't seen that many safety battles. And here, here we go again. See, he came up dry. Look how great he hit those and just came up dry. So it's, like, it's like crazy. Yeah, but uh, if you look at the two balls going to the side, they were mm -hmm. way too high, so he's breaking yeah. too hard. If you would have a pattern rack or, like, magic rack or template, like, it, then... Yeah, you, you will need to. But in this case, you still have to do the same yeah. thing next time because there's nothing to rely on. The, gr the break will always be a gamble in eight ball, always, until you have a magic rack. And that's what happens when you hit him hard, look where the cue ball is. Again, right, top rail. And look at the one in the 13, so that's a bit of a problem. Ooh, Ooh, I'm pretty sure he didn't want to run into that. Yeah, and has a lot more work to do. The two and the five is definitely a problem, in my opinion. And I then mean, the one in the 13, obviously. You know what I like here? If he, can make, uh, if he can make the six and spin it and run into the two and the five, then shoot the three in the side, and go one rail into the to the one, and now you have the six on the side as an insurance. Something he might have not thought about is that that two ball, like if he runs into these two balls mm -hmm. from that angle, there was an opportunity to, oh, well, there was a chance that the two and the 12 were yeah. going like, to line up together. So those are just little, like, little details on bumps, which, yeah, yeah he might, I have he might seen it a two. lot, yeah. I think he's going to do it the two. He's going to see if he can get on that one ball or, or, or break it up and have the six as insurance in the side pocket. I mean, nice shot on the bank shot. Mm -hmm. He knew that he had to take away the five to get more room. Oh, 
Oh no, he went. Wow, he went right in between it. Wow, he bumped it out just enough, Tim. You missed that shot. That was a dangerous shot. I would have never shot it that way. Oh, and now he's cutting it. Oh, yeah, and he's missed I'm, it. I'm, yeah. Only because the way he shot it, yeah, he hit the one and got it out of the way, but it was very easy to overspin it and hit the 13 and still keep it in, 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 uh, in front of the one ball. Oh, like you can see, still hit it too thick. Was a tough cut shot though, but he decided to go all in on it and mm -hmm. he got rid of that. At some point, if he doesn't get on that thirteen, he might want to consider making the thirteen after making the one. What would you do here, Tim? He might have to just follow the 13 behind the one. That's what I'm thinking about. Just, oh, no, 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 no. He's got a way better option. With that 10 ball, you can set up a very nice angle on the 14 mm -hmm. to cross over for the 13 in the bottom yep. left. That's my yep. favorite. No, no, no. That's that's way easier than that's following the 13. That's why I you. I wanted to see if you got the pattern, but that's definitely the pattern right there. Well, I acknowledge the problem first, and mm -hmm. then I try to address it. it. Takes me a little longer. Oh, but oh. see, that's see. I don't understand that. Why did he just that? stop the cue ball? He wanted to just end up with a natural angle there. Okay, but he could have stopped the cue ball and just go one mm -hmm. reel. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, that's a pretty poor shot. Now he's gonna have to force it over. Oh. Oh, he's gonna super draw it. Super he's gonna draw it. Super draw. Whoop. Did he go, wow, oh my God. This might yeah. be the best shot yeah. I've seen the last yeah. 10 days. Wow. No, that should definitely be in the highlight reel for sure. What a great shot that was. I mean, hit it with the old in between. With this, oh, oh no. Oh. He it. oh, I thought he overcut it there. Woo. That was a close one. This is a tie 4 4 how Tim. Did, how did he get out from there? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Is there a way we can look at that draw shot again? Wow, four each, and that was just mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, I was very. He had to, he had to hit that good. <laughs> Omar joking <laughs> around with referee. No flirting in the <laughs> arena, Omar. Come on. <laughs> yep. Little here, little here, little here we have it. This is unreal. Just look at this swing. Look at the cue yep. ball. Zit. It's just so awesome. Then he went back to the short run, come all the way up there in between the mm -hmm. six and the seven. Just here you have there it you again. Go. Much better view. Zoop. And then in between, the in betweener between the six and the seven. To get on the thirteen. I, I mean that's extreme precision. Even I mean it's just yet. it's actually really satisfying to look at too. Just look at the cue ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very satisfying. Well, it's easy to miss cue on that, too. Yeah, so Omar breaking and... For each, he's breaking from the same spot, though, every time, which, if it's working, it's great, but it hasn't been really been awesome, right? Yeah, he breaks like a monster. Ooh, oh, what's it? Got oh, a nice Cuba couple of nice saved. friendly bumperonis there. But unfortunately, they didn't make anything. But like I said earlier, making a b not making a ball on the break is equivalent to scratching or shooting the cue ball off the table. It's on this level. Yeah, I do really like the solids. Shooting a six ball, might have to soft bump the one ball because if you run into the one, it's always gonna push over to the corner. Just soft, nothing crazy. Yeah, Very hit nice. that nice. And then from there, just look at how well they're spread. Just the eight ball, so 
What he might be able to do is he will go to the two ball, play a stop shot, shoot the four and bump the eight out, and you're always guaranteed to hit the five. Or the three. Or the three, yeah. Yeah, the three. I, I like, depends I like if the three, the three goes yeah. in the bottom left. Mm -hmm. That's it all little. depends how he ends up on the four. Yeah. Because he didn't. He ended up kind of. He he wound up kind of poor on that two ball there. I mean, he's okay. He can follow it in. Come off one rail. See. Right here, and like you said, he can either shoot the three, or the five, and use one of those to get to the seven. Bumped it out, and uh, it's okay either way, I think. If he yeah. rolls the five ball in, he can get straight on the yeah, three or that little angle to go mm -hmm. to the seven. It's You might have a little bit more angle on the five and might have to leave him more angle on the, seven, uh, on the three ball. Mm. Got a 100 and we have a number of people watching us on Facebook, so I want to say hi to everyone on Facebook. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Yeah, played with a lot of insight to kill the cue ball a bit and get more straight. I think it's just okay to go just forward, float mm -hmm. the three ball in. Now just draw one rail, possibly two if he can hit it straight enough. Eight in the side. Mickey Krause takes the lead once again. Yeah, 5-4. And has been a pretty good match so far, back and forth. Both are not playing perfect. A couple small mistakes, but I mean... They might have been just missing balls to have a nice score line here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to keep it nice and tight. I want to give a special shout out to my uh, South Bay Builders Academy that I play out of in Miami. I have a lot of great people there. Yeah, there <laughs> I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Little pause. Uh, hi, Matthew. How are you, bud? I hope everything's good over there in New York. Matthew's one of the uh, owner of a pool hall called Rax, along with Troy and a couple of other guys in New York, Long Island. I miss Long Island. I love Long Island. So give a shout out to my buddy, Nick Spivey, who's uh, my sparring partner in Florida. He's one of my sparring partners, always uh, enjoy playing with him. We try our best to push each other as far as we can whenever we get a chance to play. I, I, I just cannot get enough of how awesome and beautiful this arena is. I'm in love with this, with, with, the, the with, with this area, just the area that yeah. we're in. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the arena is amazing. The, the, the crowd is amazing. Oh, look yeah, at this. Look at that. And he didn't even hit it like straight in the stack. He hit it still a little bit low mm -hmm. and managed to make that corner ball straight in. But the cue ball stops down there a lot, too. Yeah, that's one of the, the nicer things about the second ball break is that you're always in between the balls, so you get the option a little bit more. Mm -hmm. He has a nice layout here, too. Yeah, taking so the we'll 11 ball out first. That's, that's smart. I like shooting the 11, the 14, and then the 9. And then come back down for the 15, 12, and 13. Or you can shoot that and then shoot the 15 and then the nine and then shoot those in the corner and come back down. For so, so, so it's no perfect pattern. Yeah, well, I, I was going to say I like to shoot this ball 15, 12, yeah. 13, and then you from the nine go to the eight you, because you, you got so much room. You can do that too. That's why uh, a lot of times when, when, when I'm teaching my students, I'm say, tell me, show me the pattern that requires the least movement of the cue ball. Then once you do that, show me another pattern. Once you do that, show me another pattern, even if you're moving yeah. the cue ball a little more. Or if there's another pattern that requires the movement of the cue ball. And that's how you learn patterns to the point where you, you get to a point where you can rack him, I mean break him, and you just see everything. Yeah. There we 
we have maybe a new world champion in 20 years on the railing yeah, there. Yeah, who knows, right? I like the way how we play this, though. Mm -hmm. The 12 was always close to the 8. Yeah. So that, just like you said, there's so many roads and this one is definitely working. Yeah. He's about to go 6-4 up if he makes his 8 ball and he's looking confident. Oh, oh wow! He, do you see? I, I, was it? I, I can't tell if he tightened up his grip hang as he was shooting, but there was something definitely weird there. I just felt that like he really likes to stun the balls in, like very yeah. confident. And I just think he overdoes that sometimes. Like he yeah. didn't have to put this stroke that long yeah. to make a straight in shot. Just, yeah. just roll it in or just. Like, yeah. that's my opinion. The key here for Omar is to get straight on that two ball so that he can roll it up for the four. I'm a little that might change. Right that, might, that might change the set. That might have changed the set. Oh, how do you think Omar's feeling right now? Yeah. He's like, oh, He's well. He's loving it. I mean, because after that break, it was, Yeah. I mean, he had a very nice pattern, and then mm -hmm. yeah, he got perfect on the four. He's stealing a game here. We're going five each. Just a race to three here. That's right. Wow. Such you're a gonna, big swing in events. You're going to see that happen a lot because you're going to end up realizing that the more experienced players are going to get out even from even if they don't always make the right decisions. But, but the ones that don't have that knowledge are going to end up missing a lot towards the end. That, that's typical eight ball. Perfect example. Look at the little champ. Yeah, the little champ from the future. Hey, buddy. I wish you knew we were saying hi to you. All right. Oh, yeah. nice. Clap for the players. Good job. <laughs> nice, nice. Very nice to see. Always I'm, makes me so happy. I miss though. my it's boy. Wait till you meet my boy. Wait till you meet my boy next year. I told my wife she's definitely coming next year with my son. He'll be six. Oh, he, he's he'll playing here then, right? He'll be calling you Uncle Tim. Uncle Tim. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll, be, you'll melt when he does. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, just look at this amazing venue. So many players. Yeah. And I love that it's a mixture of all age categories, too. Like, it's not just kids. There's, like, the pros, the amateurs, and the kids, and then spectators. Like, every group is in mm -hmm. this building right now. I mean, what, what can be better for a game of pool? Yeah. I don't know who won the match between uh, Mateus or, uh, or Joshua, but it just finished. Oh, there's only one way to find out. I'm going to find out, but first we're going to see Omar breaking here. He's going to smash him. He didn't hit the center, but he still pocketed the ball. And will he end up with a shot? Where's the cue ball? In the back again? <laughs> yeah, not in the back. <laughs> it always like, gets it's, kissed. It's like trap. Look, 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 look. Watch this. Look. Look at this mess that it created. <laughs> well, he might be he might be hooked on almost everything. You see, sometimes you don't even sometimes you don't even get a shot for one group. Yeah, he might be he might have to shoot the two. Because I do like solids besides of the two. Like the five is a little thing, but the four is next door. Mm -hmm. And this is his only shot. Oh, mm. and he jumped up on yeah. that. Yeah, it's not an easy shot. No, definitely not, but didn't expect him to play it that way and Joshua Filler won 8-2 against Mateusz Nigocki. Gotcha. And that's, that's not a, easy because Mateusz is Mateusz a hell is a of a player. Former World Pool Masters yeah. champion. Uh, I mean, he yeah. can play. He, I, I love his game. And he's fast and loose too. So he's going to call the 2 off the 4. Oh, he called the 4. Nice shot. Good shot, kid. That was great. Yeah, and he shot a combo. He shot a combo and separated the five. I might shoot the five ball from here. Then watch this. He shot the two yeah, yeah. off the five. Well, really the four and got opened up the five a bit. Did the nine go in? Even yeah. better yet. Now he has that for the eight ball. ball. Yeah. And yeah, like I said, I might. Well, you can cut this in with left and just run into the 14. Guaranteed to be on the one. Mm -hmm. I don't like to cut it and go. Maybe run into other balls. I like the 14. There's another champ there, potential champ. There's two they're, kids there. They're now. gathering. Yeah. Oh, and. I like the speed he hit that with. 
just well okay if he hits if he makes the one ball from here that's okay i'm just wondering like i don't want to go back and forth all the time mm -hmm. so if he took yeah he has to shoot the one here because otherwise he has to go back up which is unnecessarily traveling is what you would call heavy lifting mm -hmm. that's right <laughs> that's true unnecessary I'm up un here. unnecessary heavy lifting but he definitely needs to get rid of these two balls why because these two balls are below the eight and the three and the seven are above the eight, which makes it a lot easier to play position. If you, leave, if you let the two for last, Tim, it becomes tougher to play yep. position in the eight. Not impossible, just slightly tougher. That's what I'm saying. And around the pros, I would always just tell him to at least get closer to it. Like now mm -hmm. he's got so straight on the three, he's leaving himself longer. Yeah. Now that draw gets a little scary. Yeah. If he had left a small angle just to stun over, that two ball gets so much easier. Yeah. Look at the kid doing a dance. He was doing a dance. <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about. See, people who would have left. I'm not saying this is an impossible shot, but, but there are days when you feel the heat more than others, and this will be a much tougher shot. This shows up, yeah. But unless you're Mark White, if you're Mark White, you have no chance of missing that ball. No, that's guaranteed. So, Mickey on, on six, but... Do you want to tell us a bit about our sponsors, buddy? Oh, you can this time, if you want to. Well, we uh, have the Rums of Puerto Rico. Uh, we have Discover Puerto Rico. Medalla Light, and of course, Predator. Yeah, Q Sports International. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, Tony, you can do it. <laughs> so, and then our U.S. Pro Beard Series partners are Seabird Spirit Supplies, Kamui, Alpha Coin, Cryptocurrency, Jam Up Apparel, and Fargo Rate. See, that's teamwork. <laughs> want to say a special hi to uh, Mr. George Teyechea. How are you, buddy? We miss you. Hope to be able to see you soon again at some point and do some more commentary with you. Class act, George. So second ball break again. And that one, he drew it higher, which is good because now he has a chance. But did he make anything? But to be honest, he hit this very weak. Like, I felt that the timing was not there. Look at the cue. Yeah. It actually went slow into the stack. Yeah. So that means he wasn't really timed at all. And that's to where the ball is also spread pretty good. Just wondering. He's going for the six. So that me must mean the two ball is pretty easy. He might shoot it. Did he get, Ooh, did he get it? Then? I think he can, he can still roll it in and bump the eight a little bit out and mm -hmm. get on the one. And then from the seven, go to the four in the corner. Yeah, play that in intentionally with right spin, <coughs> just to, when it hits the eight ball, it will twist it more to, to the, the left. left. Yeah. yeah. Now if he shot a stop shot on the one and got straight or, or whatever, and then use a seven for the four, there you go. And the three and the five. Yeah, there's a lot of stop shots. If he can get the cue ball under control, stop shot on the seven, stop shot on the four. Either the three in the side or the five in the corner. Right. If you can get straight on the four, it would be even nicer. Just roll in, tap that four ball in, get straight on the five, stop, and hit the three in the top right corner. He can also go forward and shoot it in the side if he mm -hmm. likes to. Just more comfortable speed. It's kind Very of nice control there. A little bit faster though. It's got a little bit further on this five. But the three ball is in the center of the table and goes in almost every pocket, so. I'm trusting a rotation player in this. Right. Play this again with left spin. He's good here. Oh, left himself a little bit more angle than I would have liked to the side pocket. 
Uh, but you never know. Maybe he did that intentionally just to make sure he doesn't have to shoot over the ball. Causes extension. Oh, wow, he had more Ooh. angle. Oh, he caught a roll with extra jelly and butter there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because that Abel could have easily gone in, and he would have lost the rack. And that's a tie 6-6. Six, six. We got a ball game, guys. Yeah, Omar definitely takes a little bit more risky shots here and there. Mr. Billy Thorpe is watching us. How you doing, bud? Hope to see you in these tournaments, man. We miss you here. Yeah, again, beautiful view of the arena. The Predator World Eight Ball Championships. First round matches right now. Scores tied six each. And Omar has the break, playing winner break. So that means having one dry break could cost him the match eight six. Mm -hmm. So from here, it's even more important to get it done get make a ball on the break however i don't care how you do it make a ball yeah and for those of you who don't know obviously you're watching us on facebook now uh this is the first time that we're doing a predator event with streaming two tables as opposed to one with commentary on both tables so we're rotating sometimes doing table one and table two table two is always stream on facebook at Pro Billet Series, the Predator Pro Billet Series page. It's absolutely free. And on YouTube, Table 1 is where we stream it on YouTube. And you can actually watch every single match in the event. We have cameras on all of them. Obviously, the other matches aren't going to have commentary. But you can watch that at tv.kazoom.com, right? tv.kazoom. So that's K-O-Z-O-O-M. Yeah, you just have to register. Make an account, log in, and you can watch all the tables for free. That's mm -hmm. that must be the best thing that uh, that have ever happened to pull. Oh, and broke. I made a ball. Yeah. I told you, just whatever it takes, and yeah. he's done it. So I do like the solids, just based on the three and the twelve up there. And the one is connected to the five and end up the end I like to have the one, five, seven, eight in the side. Mm -hmm. So that's my ending. So end up by the center of the table, the right side of the table, depending on where he hits a cue ball. There you go. And now especially with the angle on the six, if he shoots if he likes a six though, if he thinks a pocket yeah. is big enough, I like to go to the four right now. Mm -hmm. If you get on the four, you can go from the three to the one and then Yeah, like and I then said, the five, seven, eight in the side, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he did. Oh, he, oh, he decided to do something different. I don't know why. Oh, and I mean, he can still he can still get out here with the one five seven, but he definitely didn't want to do that. Oh, and this is why I said maybe shoot the six first. You always have the three as a backup, and then if you don't get on the four, you can mm -hmm. still shoot the three. Well, made the six, and now one five four oh, seven. Can, yeah, one five four seven mm -hmm. is still okay, but. Gina Kim Lipsky, how are you? How was Paris? So the five, four, seven, and the eight in the side. Mm, came a little short there. There's the unnecessary heavy lifting, but the lifting is all the heavy lefty li lifting is done. <laughs> <laughs> all the heavy lifting is done. I think he's out from here. This is to go on the hill.
And this is an official. Nikki, and mm -hmm. it's over, so. You know who these two guys remind me with the way they break? My, remember I mentioned my sparring partner at the academy, Nick Spivey? He, he breaks like a monster. Well, let's see what he does here, Tim. He's going to smash him. Let's see if he pockets the ball on the break. It's just amazing how you can have so many balls moving and not, nothing drops. But look where the cue ball is. Again. Yeah, so not an easy two ball. It's not there. Yeah, I think he's looking to see if he can make the seven off the 13. if, Because he doesn't really have an easy shot on, this, on, on the strike. Weighing his options. Must not forget that there is a time clock. You always get 60 seconds so after the break. You know, and sometimes you just get this game to where the rack is so 50-50. Like, mm -hmm. but either way you go, you will find yourself into trouble. Like yeah. it's Well, you know, he knows that if he shoots that 7 off that 13, he opens up the pocket for the 6 as well. But I like to take care of problems sooner rather than later. I'd rather have him do something crazy and draw in the, into the six or something right now just because of the, where the two is. I would not mind it at all if he can miss a side pocket with a lot left. Just to make something happen because right now, like the more you stall it, the more he's going to be in trouble. Or make the five and make the four and go into the six. That's what he's doing. And unfortunately, he made it worse. But the six does go. But the seven no longer goes. You know, and sometimes when I'm playing on the bar table, this is the moment where I'm like, okay, I might play safe. Like, I might just push the three and the eight together just to just to make sure my opponent doesn't really. Because mm -hmm. from here, your percent his percentage has dropped immensely, like really big time. Yeah. Well, can he go past that 10 ball, Tim, to go two rails? He can go past the 10 ball or even just one rail and come back down for that six ball in the corner, just like that. Did he hit it hard enough? He might have. And if he can cut it and get position for the seven in the side pocket, I don't know if he can hit it full enough. Can he maybe go top left and run into the 12 and then run into the seven? Absolutely. Or just like but he this? has to hit it with speed if he does oh, that. He can't hit it soft if he, he wants to do that. He tied that seven ball up. Yeah. And his best shot from here is go elevate and go two rails and bank the seven cross side. <laughs> That's the only <laughs> thing I see here. Well, it's, I was going to say it's either that or play the bank right now. Yeah. Like pushing the 11 through the short rail with the cue ball and then bank yeah. the seven and make the long three. Yeah, big mistake. And See, now the 11 goes for Omar once he's cleared out the 13 and the 12. But he doesn't have a clear path to the 12, and it doesn't make sense to hit rail first because then he'll end up running dead into the 13, and it'll make it tougher to es have the cue ball escape. And it's always a possibility if you hit it just the right way, you might pocket the ball and end up scratching in the same pocket. <laughs> we have referee John Lehman right in front of us doing his special dance, whatever that is. Oh, I thought is that the Macarela? I thought it was just stretching. Oh, he was oh. stretching. I see. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so still has to get rid of the 12 and the 13, or at least the 13, I would say. Can he shoot I mean, the, the 11 to the 12? The thing is, I with two count. balls in front of the bo Ooh, almost missed that. And well, if he did that, that means the 11 didn't go. Yeah. If so that was actually the shot. The thing is, 
the reason why I would have liked to take the 13 or the 12 away first mm -hmm. is because I don't like how the balls are like clustering now. Yeah. Like there was a big chance this ball was going to lay next to yeah. the 7 and he's making it work but it could have been way different. Right. Well, this is going to be for the win. Uh, and before we sign off, I want to thank everyone who took the time to tune in for the stream. I hope you're all enjoying the tournament. Thank you, Steve, Stephen Martin, for the words. Uh, thank you, Tim. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Yeah, Tony Robles and Tim DeRuder are signing out. Thank you, guys.